Here in Jakarta, foreign investors and Indonesians bemoan the woeful infrastructure, interminable traffic jams and mind-numbing red tape. But somewhat surprisingly, management consultancy A.T. Kearney recently put the Indonesian capital at the top of a ranking of global emerging business cities. I'm here with John Kurtz, the Asia-Pacific head for A.T. Kearney, and one of just a handful of regional executives who choose to be based here in Jakarta rather than better connected Singapore or Hong Kong. So what's changing in Jakarta, Mr. Kurtz? Well, it's interesting. I was as surprised as anyone. Uh, I'm a resident of Jakarta and like uh, everyone who comes to visit and everyone who lives here, the traffic really is overwhelmingly bad and is the typically the discussion of the day, like we talk about weather in other countries. Um, but this, this study was a global study of 35 cities. This measured which cities are most likely to make up ground over the coming years. Um, and when you start to put that sort of view on it, Jakarta makes a little bit more sense. I know the Jakarta governor, Joko Widodo, has said he wants to start construction of an MRT and monorail. But Jakarta governors have been saying that for decades. What makes you think any of these plans to improve the city are actually going to come off this time? Well, I do think he's more serious. Um, I mean, think one, ironically, one of the things driving uh, traffic on the Jakarta streets in the last couple of months has, in fact, been the MRT and, and, and its, uh, its construction. But his commitment, I think, to the, to the improvements in infrastructure are strong. Whether that can continue, uh, given the other political things that are happening in the country, we'll see. And I know A.T. Kearney advises a lot of multinationals. Do you expect more regional executives to follow your lead in the next five to ten years and move their regional base from Singapore, Hong Kong, Kuala Lumpur to Jakarta? I've seen over the last, I would say, 18 months, more global boards visiting Indonesia than I've ever seen. Um, and so whether they locate their headquarters here, that tends to depend on where executives want to live. And it's still, uh, you know, it's, it's still got its challenges in that sense. But clearly Indonesia has arrived on the map of global corporations. To continue attracting those companies, I think there are, there are deeper issues the country needs to tackle, like entrenched corruption, um, low productivity, and really anemic job growth. What does, in your view, what does the country need to do to start tackling some of these issues? The issue of corruption is a really substantial issue. Um, and one that has to be tackled from the very top. So it'll be interesting to watch uh, the coming elections and to see who's elected and how that gets handled. Because it isn't just about corruption slowing things down, it's about fundamentally the drive to want to change things. On the corruption issue, there have recently been a lot of high-profile convictions, including most recently the head, former head of the oil and gas regulator. I mean, do you take this as a sign that the country is moving ahead in the fight against corruption? It is important that that some of these cases are being um, are being discovered and being prosecuted, and, and in fact that that people are going to jail. Uh, I think it reveals a system that's out of control and a system that needs to be uh, wholly changed. They're still picking and choosing who they, who they go after, and I think, I think there are um, some interests that are still being protected. But as, as they go, that's giving the electorate confidence. I think it's giving businesses confidence. Indonesian economists like to joke that this country has a lot of potential and always will. How important do you think July's presidential election will be in determining whether Indonesia can finally live up to its grand ambitions? Yeah, I think that's a very important question. It's, a, it's also a rather good joke. Um, I, think, uh, I think the elections are going to be important, but not in ways that, that, uh, that many people think. I think there are some analogies uh, that one can draw to the, uh, the hope that the U.S. had in the hands of Obama that you see with Indonesia's hope in, hopes in Jokowi. And I think it's also dangerous in the same way. With, with great hopes comes great disappointment when, when the entrenched interests sink in. And, and looking beyond Indonesia, the 10 nations of Southeast Asia say they want to move to an EU-style economic community from next year. But in a region that encompasses countries as diverse as tiny communist Laos, the Sharia-based Sultanate of Brunei, and then big challenged economies like Indonesia, Philippines, Vietnam, how realistic is it that Southeast Asia can move to this economic community from 2015? 2015 is a, is, a, is a time period that's looking increasingly unrealistic, and so I think we'll see, we'll see it in fits and starts. Uh, I don't think there's going to be a glorious new day of ASEAN anytime soon, but there's strong commitment and I think progress has been made. Mr. Kurtz, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.